letting Biden know if you don't lean into blackness, you're going to get your ass kicked in November. You ain't black. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Benny. I'm not an avid listener of urban leftist radio. The Breakfast Club certainly caters to the center left, and it certainly caters to a different audience than I typically consume or consider myself a part of. But, man, do they ever drop fire. Like when they opened up their lines uh, just this week and asked people what they thought about Biden 2024. Kind of went like this. Hello, who's this? It's Adeladia. Adeladia, good morning. Adeladia. Boy, that's a name. You got a name on you. Good morning, good morning. Yep, Adeladia, Cuban baby. Very pretty. So what do you think, mama? Hello? Adeladia, you forgetting like Joe Biden right now. now. You forgot the question? Yeah, we hear you. What do you think? Okay, so y'all want to talk about the Biden? Yeah, yeah, we would like to. the Biden. Hunter or Joe, which one? (laughs) Stop it, man. All right, I got something to say about Biden. I think Biden is a creep. You know, he ain't really doing (laughs) for us. And he, with his Biden $16,000, you still have to have the credit to get that loan. So he ain't really doing for us. (laughs) <laughs> oh, it did not go as planned. Oh, man. Listen, the Breakfast Club callers bash creep. Joe Biden was asked if he should run for president. I'd rather have Trump. Let's listen. Oh, man, it gets better. I bet you live in George Hi, um, my name's Ariel. How are you? Ariel, good morning. We're talking about Joe Biden. What are your thoughts? Um, I don't think he should run again. And <laughs> though I don't know who's running in his replacement, um, I'm 31. And I would like to see someone younger in there. Yeah. Who's this? Who's this? Noel speaking. Noel, good morning. We're talking Joe Biden. Do you think he should run again? No way. Not Why? at all. Why? <laughs> I mean, every, I think everybody can see it, all the confidence. You know, he's not even aware of what's going on. Just like <laughs> you guys said, you know, the people, are, the people are watching what's going on. What do you think he's not aware of? What day it is? He's incoherent. <laughs> Beaks. Charlamagne said it, you know, everybody knows what's going on with him. Um, it, it's a joke. I, I mean, to even really entertain the idea, you know, it makes no sense at all. I mean, I could understand, you know, you guys are supporters, but... We're supporters of democracy. I mean, and we're supporters of our survival. Right. We're supporters of not seeing another January 6th. Do you think we uh, Biden should run again? Bumblebee? I, I think that for the mental health of himself and uh, the people in the United States, I think it's correct he doesn't. He seems to be very forgetful. For his mental health, we think it's better if he doesn't. Man, i got to tell you, I would really, really like to meet Charlemagne the God someday because I feel like we might actually have a lot in common. We can't play this clip because it's copyrighted, but boy, uh, the probably toughest interview that Kamala Harris has had since becoming vice president was Charlemagne the God asking who the real president is. It's wild. Don't start talking like a Republican, she said, as her uh, MSNBC host future MSNBC host, the current uh, press flack, Simone Sanders, tried to drag her off the set, man. It was beautiful. This was like the one of the best inter- one of the best interviews I've ever seen in my life. So Breakfast Club callers, Breakfast Club callers, again, a far left radio show speaking uh, primarily to uh, to urban communities. Uh, was, couldn't find a single person that wanted Joe Biden to be president again in 2024. It was absolutely spectacular. So, yeah, this wouldn't be the first time that Charlemagne the God has gone in hard against Joe Biden. He is not a fan of Joe Biden. You may recall this is the same guy that Joe Biden said, if you don't vote for him, you're not black. So perhaps that's what pissed off Charlemagne the God to begin with. This is also the same guy who has called out Hillary Clinton on carrying hot sauce in her purse clearly pandering to black Americans and Elizabeth Warren uh, for faking being an Indian, calling her a Indian Rachel Dolezal, who's a white lady who pretended to be black. 
Uh, Charlamagne the God was on CNN and had this bomb to drop on Joe Biden. For being light there, you were talking about age. And obviously, yes. judge is talking about Joe Biden, you know, mm -hmm. changing the race. Uh, in that, that bite I played with Reverend Al Sharpton. He, though, is talking about their age difference, right? Trying to make this as a point of a generational change. Joe Biden is a different generation. Very, right. I mean, let's, so. let's just be frank. Joe yeah. Biden is 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 what going to be 77 years old this yeah. year. Does age matter? Yes, I do think age matters. You know what I'm saying? Especially when you're dealing with somebody like Joe Biden, because, you know, I got my questions about Joe Biden. Like, you know, uh, after learning more about Joe over the past few months, I, I, I question why even Barack Obama picked him as, 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 as vice president, you know, just because of things like the 94 crime bill. And, you know, mm -hmm. you know, he didn't just you know, vote on the 94 crime bill. He wrote the 94 crime bill, especially one of the passages that was uh, a real big push, you know, for mass incarceration, you know, and, and, you know, just things he said, like Barack Obama is the first mainstream black uh, person who was clean and articulate, like just that wording you know, disturbs me in, in, in a yeah. lot of ways, you know? So I just wonder if somebody uh, that's, that's, that's Joe Biden's age, can you really teach an in, in, in old dog new tricks? Yeah, uh, he was right. Boy, was he right. CNN also broadcasting way, way early last year uh, some personal interviews with Democrats talking about how much they hate Joe Biden. The, the self-ownership of leftist media never ceases to amaze. I cannot believe that this made CNN airwaves. An economic catastrophe, this potential deal comes as a devastating new poll finds that 55% of the American people, according to a Quinnipiac poll, disapprove of President Biden's handling of the economy. And the president is seeing the lowest score on his job performance since taking office, only 38% approval. Now, as CNN's Jeff Zeleny reports, voters in Michigan are telling him that their patience is running thin. It's just like it's healthy in a dysfunctional family to air your grievances, but I don't think it's smart. The dysfunctional family Lori Goldman's talking about is the Democratic Party and its messy divide in Washington. I think we have to be a little more pragmatic about what we can do and what we can't do. She campaigned for President Biden and remains hopeful he can unify the party around his domestic agenda, now endangered by disagreements among progressive and moderate Democrats. Biden came to Michigan on Tuesday, eager to take the conversation into the country. I want those jobs here in Michigan not halfway around the globe. It was his fourth presidential visit to a state he narrowly won last year. Voters here say they're watching him carefully with optimism. He's been really, really good. Um, he, you know, he's willing to tell the truth um, regardless of the political consequences. And skepticism. I have to give him mixed reviews. Ken Damaro, an independent, and Susan Sharon, a Republican, are longtime friends. He believes Biden has restored competence to the White House. I think he's trying to run as a fair dealer, and he's trying to work with the other side. Unfortunately, the other side, I don't think, is interested in working with him. She worries about the cost of Biden's programs. I can't even fathom a trillion dollars, and yet, you know, there's just going out like no big deal. After a summer of setbacks on Afghanistan and COVID, the president is scrambling to prove his party can govern. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin, whose district Biden visited... <laughs> fears the gridlock in the Capitol will turn off some voters. Look, do I wish we were more productive? Yeah. Um, am I fighting and trying to push people that way? Yes. The hostility outside the Union Training Center did not escape Biden's eye. Notwithstanding some of the signs that I saw come, that's why 81 million Americans voted for me. But he firmly believes his individual economic plans have broad appeal. Several Biden supporters here say they're willing to be patient. I don't agree with everything, but I know his heart is right, and that's important. Lori Goldman is too, but she believes Biden must make his case more forcefully. Take a page from the Trump playbook. Less apologizing, more explaining, and get more done. From the Trump playbook? Yeah. He never, he never apologized for anything. I'd like him to get out there and just charge ahead. Now, Jake, you mentioned those declining poll numbers earlier. Those numbers come alive when you talk with voters here in Battleground, Michigan. But one thing also is true, talking to independent and Democratic voters as well. They believe that if President Biden and Democrats come together to pass some of this agenda, it is broadly popular. So the White House at least hopes those numbers would go up. But that, of course, is very much an open question, because as we know, there is still no deal 
on the Biden economic plan. And of course, who can forget when MSNBC went to a gas station in Florida and thought this would work out well for them live on air? Um, let's just say it did not. Because people are not wanting to fill up their cars all the way. They can't afford to, given the fact that prices have close to doubled over the course of the last year. Come with me for a second. We have William Hurtado, who's here with his daughter, Aubrey. He's from say. Miami. Hi, William. Thank you for joining us. Anytime. Let me ask you this. You said you actually had your tank that was half full to begin with, and you're topping it off now. I'm topping it off. Why is that your strategy? It helps with the budget. It doesn't feel as painful as, you know, $70. So when you come to the gas station ordinarily, you're talking about a $70 bill just to fill up your tank. Easy. Four cylinder. Which is incredible. And obviously you have a young daughter here. How is this affecting your family in terms of the budgetary impact of just gas. We just have to re-strategize. I'm sure it hurts other people's more, other people's pockets more than others, but for mine, you know, we, we adjusted. Well, let me ask you about that because there's so many things that are going up in cost right now. Housing is a major issue. It is. Clothing, groceries, because Everything. the diesel fuel has gone up. The trucks are being used to transport those things. Of Indeed. all those items I just mentioned, what's number one on your list for biggest impact? Gas. Gas is number one? Yes. It used to be very cheap. Now it's not. Is that because you just needed to be able to get to work, to get your family around? What makes this particular situation so fragile for so many families, do you think? The commute to work, it's, it's a long distance. We're talking about 20 miles a day. And you have to do that? Probably more. Perhaps one of the strategies, are you trying to work from home more or you don't have that option? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have that option. What do you do? Uh, I'm getting into law enforcement. Got it. And you obviously have, is this your only child or do you have a full family? I have a full family. I have three bo uh, two boys, uh, my daughter and my wife. One of, one of the boys drives 17 year old. Okay, so you have a very busy household. We're very busy. He's starting to add onto your gas tab as well. What, what do you think Americans are thinking right now? As they see these prices climb and climb, do you feel like there's a sense that there's someone to blame out there? If you had to blame anyone, could you? I don't like to get political, but I would say, you know, it starts from the top, president. Indeed. And I think I would add, Katie, that there is a point to be made here. And thank you so much, William. I appreciate it. Wait, don't your time let him go, so away, because I got a question for There's a point to be him. made here that the Biden administration. Don't let him go, Wake. He's got, got a question, question for him. Yes, please. I, well, on what he just said, blaming at the top, I wonder, is this going to influence? Is he planning on voting in, in the uh, in the midterms? And will it influence his vote, number one? And number two, um, he considering trading in that car and getting a green car, an electric car, hybrid car? <laughs> All right. Two Two-pronged question for you, William. Okay. The first one is this, and Katie makes a great point. The fact that we are seeing gas prices impact people's pocketbooks so much right now, would that change how you're considering voting for the next election, whether it's congressional later this year or presidential a couple of years down the road? Definitely, definitely. I just know that one administration had cheaper gas, and this administration has more expensive gas. And this is a bottom line, strictly financial conclusion for you. I mean, it's a housing market. It's everything you previously mentioned. If, I mean, gas is a big part of it, but I mean, right now we're house hunting and that seems impossible. It is. In South Florida, it basically is impossible right now. It Biggest increases impossible. in home prices of any market over the last couple of years. Second Definitely. question from Katie, your car here, would you consider trading this in for a green electric version? Do you think now would be the time to do that? Actually, when this lease is up, my wife and I thought about going electric. Um, we just have to take a look at the budget and see how expensive going electric is. Because the technology is very pricey. It is. It's more expensive. And then there's the other thing that demand is not necessarily caught up with production at this point. I know, Katie, federal figures show it's been about an 85 percent increase between 2020 and 2021 for electric vehicles. And yet so many people want to buy them at the beginning of this year and maybe don't even have that option because car manufacturers cannot produce them affordably and at a rate which people actually want to consume them. It's another crunch right now that's going on amidst this gas crisis. And the granddaddy of them all, the greatest uh, self-ownership of corporate press in the Biden era with Trump electioneering, sloganeering, and anti-Biden messaging is in the history books, ladies and gentlemen. Well, let's go, Brandon. Oh my God, it's just such an unbelievable moment. Brandon, you also told me, as you can hear the chants from the, the crowd, Let's go, Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> it gets me every single time. So what do you guys think? I mean, is the Breakfast Club right? Is nobody going to vote for Joe Biden again? Is even Joe Biden's strongest base of support coming out against him? Is he have any support left? Does anyone even care? Or 
has he been totally and completely abandoned? We found out that Joe Biden's own chief of staff is resigning this week. So, ladies and gentlemen, bad times in Bidenville. I think he has fewer friends than ever. And maybe even his own son will be turning on him in a court of law. We'll see what happens. That's all we got for today, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you love fighting, please keep watching our program. We're fighting right alongside with you. Don't let the demons get you down. We're going to win. It's going to be glorious. So keep memeing, keep criticizing, and ladies and gentlemen, keep fighting. My name is Benny Johnson. See ya. Thank you for watching. Our channel's here to meme the libs until they cry and then to meme them crying. Their tears, they taste just like sweet, delicious ice cream. Salty, too. We ridicule the establishment and the libs because of you. Your support keeps us going. So if you like what you saw, please punch the subscribe button, click like, and ring the little bell so that you know when we're live. Don't you want to know when we're live? And make sure that you subscribe to our email list just in case the plug gets pulled, as tends to happen. If you want to see more of our videos, click here or here. My name is Benny Johnson. Stay free. Base Patriots.